Today we're aiming the high-speed camera at every saw I own to learn why saws with fewer teeth cut faster and why some saws are terrible at cutting along the grain of the wood and much more. Three, two, one, go! Here we have a table saw blade with 24 teeth, 60 teeth and 100 teeth. To see which one is faster, we have a weight connected with some pulleys to the sliding table on which we have mounted a thick piece of oak. Yeah, go. And indeed, the fewer teeth a blade has, the faster it cuts. The 100 tooth blade even started to smoke pretty badly. Is it burnt? Yeah, it's like charred. Oh. One of the proposed reasons you might see floating around on the internet is that the smaller gullets on the blade with many teeth fill up with sawdust. So if you try to go fast, there's nowhere for the wood to go. I think that's a bunch of malarkey, but I am not a high-speed camera, so who am I to say? Luckily, Chrome Technologies sent me their Kronos 4K12, so let's take a look. We had a kilowatt of LED lights straight onto blade. I had to wear a welding cap so as not to get blinded. Table saw blades are very fast, so it was a challenge to get an acceptable combination of pixels, frame rate, lighting and motion blur, but after a couple of hours we suddenly struck gold, completely by accident, with the 60 tooth blade. Yeah? Go. All right. <laughs> Let me turn this off and play back. This is amazing. <laughs> We are so lucky. This is super interesting because now we have like a stop motion that is way slower. It matches perfectly. Safe. Wow, this is really... Oh, we, we, I want to do it again. Um, this is exceptional. I'm thinking if we can, um, if we can actually do better because these, these teeth are like, like this, right? And now we have exactly one tooth per frame, which means that every frame the tooth switches sides. But if we half the frame rate, yes, it works. Look at it. Da -da 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 -da, my favorite. Look at this. This is just crazy. After some tries and recalculations, we got this shot. So as you can clearly see, the gullets are nowhere near filling up. So that's not the reason why saw blades with many teeth cut slower. Hey, Aldo from the future here. Last night I had a light bulb moment. I had this whole animation here basically saying that the size of a cut will always have the same surface area, but that the front, well, if you have to take more bites, you have to cut the wood more times, which takes more energy. Duh. And that felt unsatisfying and even disrespectful to your intelligence. But last night I asked myself if the percentage difference in cutting speed between different blades would be the same for cutting across the grain as it was for cutting along the grain. So I went back to the workshop and built up this whole contraption again. In the rip cut test at the start of the video, the 24 tooth blade took 171 frames to cut through the block. The 60 tooth blade took nearly three times longer and the 100 tooth blade took 8.7 times longer but in this new crosscut test the 60 tooth blade took just 10% longer that's crazy and the 100 tooth blade took just over two and a half times longer so this fact that more teeth take more energy is much stronger when you are ripping. As I said, you're cutting the front again and again and again, but the sides only once. And cutting the fibers themselves is much harder than cutting in between the fibers. So you want to cut the fibers only once, and you can cut between the fibers as many times as you want without it costing much power. This feels like a satisfying insight to me. And now I'm putting high tooth count blades on my saw for basically all cross cuts. Back to you, Aldo from the Past. All right, now let me explain the coolest shot I think I've ever captured. The two most common types of saw blades by far are rip cut and cross cut saws. A ripping saw is just a bunch of straight chisels after one another and it's made to saw along the grain of the wood. It chops off the fibers and since they're only weakly connected on the sides, it cuts great. In the other direction, it works too. However, 
not very well because it makes a super easy cut between the fibers, but then it has to tear them. This causes the fibers to splinter outwards on the ends, although not when you go small enough. This is a dovetail saw and it has tiny rib cut teeth and it doesn't tear out that much and it's worthwhile to understand exactly why. The size of a ripping saw's teeth are just square. They're not really going to cut anything on the side without a fight. So it takes a bite and just start to push against the fibers and the connection between the fibers then fails first, which creates a small lever. And this lever grows until the bite breaks. And when you take a bigger bite, you still separate just two fibers while you're combining the breaking strength of this fiber bundle. So with bigger bites, the lever needs to be longer for the connection between the fibers to overcome the breaking strength of this bundle. And because this saw takes very small bites, the tear out is also very small. You can see that I sharpened the tip with a less aggressive angle than the teeth later on. That's so you can easily start a cut without the saw grabbing the wood. Negative rake angles like that take more power to make a cut, generate more heat, but they leave a nicer surface finish and generally dull less quickly. So they are used on saws that are made for finishing work or for hard materials like this 100 tooth blade I showed you earlier. The other blades did have the same rake angle and tooth profile, don't worry. Now, Crosscut blades like the one in this shot are quite a bit different, especially on hand saws. They cut the fibers on the sides and then the middle comes out naturally. When you cut across the grain that is, if you try to cut along the grain of the wood, you just cut in between the fibers and you never actually sever them. So you end up with a piece of wood in the middle that just slaloms between the saw teeth. And that's what we see here. Saws are generally made to cut in either the push stroke, like western saws, or on the pull stroke, like Japanese saws. This is not much difference, except that the pull saws can be thinner because they don't have to resist buckling. Oh, and there are Australian saws, of course. <laughs> There are also some saws that work in two directions, like this bow saw or the old-time feller saws. That's why the teeth are like that. You have two teeth that score the sides, which works in both directions, and then you have a tooth that gouges out the middle. But that only works in one direction, so you need a double-sided tooth. This old sawmill at the steam show has such a blade, because it has to move back and forth. But moving back and forth is really inefficient. This thing needs a ton of power and a very sturdy frame, while well, in the end it's not even half as fast as this little machine. These days we can have a blade bend around a wheel and go back to the start without collecting a salary, I mean without breaking. One hilarious detail about this machine is this sticker. Follower belt will ride loose. This is normal. It's about this belt. You just know that I got a thousand calls about it. When I start the machine, the top of the blade actually starts to wobble and vibrate because the tension is lost on that part of the saw. This wheel starts to pull on the blade here and all the resistance from the cutting or from getting the other wheel up to speed in this case ends up stretching the saw out a little bit. And that slack ends up at the top. This saw makes dust and not chips. And on a chainsaw, for example, that's a clear sign that your saw is dull, but not here, because we are ripping along the grain of the wood. Tiny, tiny pieces of wood break off instead of larger chips. In a full cut, you can also see that the gullets on this saw are finally filling up a little bit. And then the saw turns around while the sawdust just flies straight out of the port. It's great. A sawmill like this also drops water on the blade, soapy water in fact, and you might think that's for cooling, but that's not quite right. It's to keep the resin from sticking to the blade, because that creates a ton of friction and heat. One downside of having the blade curved to the side is that you're only ever going to have a cut that's as large as the distance between the blades, and that's where chainsaws come in. They curve the blade in the direction of the cut, so that it can follow the cutting side down into the wood. That's really what makes this chainsaw so special. They cut in a continuous motion, so they are super fast, but you also need to be just on one side of the wood. Like the people that came up with this, super smart. Let's take a look. Chainsaw teeth are a bit different than your regular chisel, as they are basically a crosscut and a rip cut chisel in one. They cut on the bottom and the side at the same time. And they have a super aggressive rake angle, like 30 to 45 degrees. Well, table saw blades, for example, are playing in like the 15 or minus 5 degree range. 
this high rake angle makes it cut more efficiently through the soft wet wood. But it also likes to grab and dig itself into the wood. So a chainsaw chain also has a raker right in front of the chisel. It's basically a depth gauge that determines how deep a cut the chisel can take. And that's also where kickback comes from. At the tip, the curve makes the raker move out of the way. So that's where the chain can really suck itself into the wood. Which is super dangerous, because instead of moving the wood, it suddenly moves the saw and it jumps at your face. Which is why this break is located here. When it jumps out of your hand, your hand will automatically hit the break. Now, let's see it cut. Oh, you can see the oil. Actually? Wow. Look at all these strings. Oh yeah. That's all oil. Well, you wanted oil. That's a lot. Chainsaws can be quite tricky when you first try to fill them. You might think that they take regular gasoline because they have an oil port. But no, they take an oil mixture and the oil port is just there to lubricate the chain and the bar. I bought these when I was 14. <laughs> Nice long chips. You can see that the outer teeth don't do much, even on the bottom. I think that's just because I'm cutting on the edge, so they flop around a little bit to the side. But it might also be that I hit a rock some time ago and sharpened one side more than the other without realizing. Oops. One of my favorite saws is this, the multi-tool. Instead of vibrating up and down like a jigsaw, it vibrates like sideways. But this means that you can push it into corners and stuff. It's Super slow though, in all ways it's a terrible saw, unless you need it, then it's the only tool that can get the job done. One nice detail is that they are relatively safe. <laughs> but it was a stick. With a table saw or a chainsaw, you instantly lose your finger if you hit it, but with this one, well, it just vibrates back and forth, so it cuts hard things that are fixed in place pretty well, but it has a hard time cutting something that is soft and moving along with the blade, like this glove. <laughs> it rubbed through on the underside. Just the friction between the leather, like... But of course, don't try this with your actual finger, by the way. It does go through the glove eventually. Oh, and we didn't talk about saw set yet. The teeth on a saw are bent outwards a little bit so that they make the cut that's slightly wider than the blade itself. If you have a short blade with a big set, you can easily make rotations and stuff. Setting a teeth on a hand saw is generally done with a tool like this. It literally just pushes a tooth over. But when you have tiny, tiny teeth like on this hacksaw, they just put waves into the blade instead. I think that's very funny. Let's take a look. Yeah, go. Oh yes, this is the money shot. You can really see the teeth scrape a little bit of metal away. This is super zoomed in and at this scale, metal becomes a kind of buttery substance. It's kind of nice. This obviously needs very hard teeth. So sometimes you have like a tiny super fine wood saw and someone thinks that's a metal saw and then a kitten dies somewhere. Many modern hand saws have hardened teeth. I don't recommend using them for metal, but they don't get dull as quickly after you buy them. However, if you try to sharpen them, you ruin your files. It's generally not recommended. You can argue that this is something that saw manufacturers do to sell more saws in the long run, but I think they just know that you are not going to sharpen them anyway, right? You are obviously interested in the physics of the everyday. So if you want to get a little bit more serious about the actual physics and math behind it, I can highly recommend Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. I'm actually on a 200 day streak already, brushing up my math a little bit. But you can also learn logic, computer science, data analysis, and much more. For me, it's nice to have a way to study and reach serious learning goals while not doing an actual study, right? When you're working, it's kind of tricky to make dedicated time to get better at things like math, especially in a way that's actually effective. Because when you finally do make time, like where to start? 
where to go. With Brilliant, having a roadmap to follow, a dedicated app and daily reminders so you get into a habit of learning has been really nice for me. I'm currently relearning all the effective ways to calculate surface area and volume of strange shapes in an interactive way instead of just memorization. I can tell you more about it, but you can actually just try it out for free if you go to brilliant.org slash noart and you also get 20% off an annual premium subscription with unlimited daily access. Today's homework is to use something that is most definitely not a saw as a saw and send a picture of the aftermath in the homework discord chat. And don't forget to mention the teeth per inch and the rake angle. I hope to see you in the next video.